Hello and welcome to Talk from Superheroes. Hey everybody, I'm Andrew Rivemi. And I'm Diana McCullough. And you are listening to Talk from Superheroes, where every week we discuss a piece of superhero television or film. And this week we dare to ask the question, what if? What if we discussed... What if? What if? It would sound like The podcast again. It It would would pretty much be pretty close to a usual episode of the podcast, actually. But it didn't exist before, Mm. and it will exist now. If we did ever want to repilot the podcast, this would have been the episode. (laughs) Oh, shit. That's a lot of pressure right now. No, I'm saying we're not doing (laughs) that. Oh, okay. I'm saying we're... But if we did, Mm. this would have been the one where we could have, like, just, like, just a new format... Just start slipping new things in. It'd be cool if we never... I'm not even... Like, it's just someone else. Yeah, like... It's Diana. Even... And then, like, it's just like, Hi, it's me, Philip, your usual host. We never draw you know attention me, to it. me, Philip. Never... It's never brought up it's that I've new, been re- recast. It's, it's a new universe. Yeah. We don't mention it. It's mm. cool, guys. What if... What if... Andrew was replaced was, with Philip. Was recast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What if Scar could talk? And oh, it's just me and the dog. See, that's that's the that's type the of dream. heat. That's the dream. That's the type... That's a, that's the spicy meatball that you want out of the world. Oh, man. I shouldn't dream so big. Yeah. I can't reach that. You gotta... You're gonna dog to, co-host? You're gonna have to bring it down and aim a little smaller because uh, you can't dream that big. Uh, so we're talking about what if. We're gonna be talking about... Uh, we've seen uh, episodes one to six. Seven, which is what we're going to be discuss- discussing on today's episode. So, uh, a spoiler warning for episodes one to seven. Uh, we have not seen eight and nine at the time of this, so you're, you're you're safe. You're safe if you're listening to this when eight and nine is out there. We haven't messed with those. It's one to seven, but there are they are all relatively self-contained little stories. So you know they can be air quote spoiled. But also, it doesn't really touch upon anything else, so you don't need to worry too much. Yeah, they're contained, and the title gives away what happens. So I would say mm. if you're trying to avoid spoilers for this show, make sure you don't read the titles. No, yeah, you gotta just like That's you gotta the, blast that play button real quick. You when gotta you get, in get there. right in there. You gotta you, keep clicking. If you really want to go, like I don't even want to know what the change is gonna be. You yeah. gotta dive in so fast. Which is tough because the Disney Plus interface does not really encourage that. Because sometimes you click. Things and I think when you like click what if it's one of those menus where it goes to the next menu but nothing is selected. So if you keep hitting like OK or Enter or whatever's on your remote, it's not doing anything until you hit like down. Mm-hmm. You know those ones where it's like here's a new menu and you technically are nowhere on that menu somehow. You exist both everywhere and nowhere simultaneously. They ask the question, what if you weren't on this menu? And you've got to do something. This will be actually the thing I genuinely kind of like about Disney Plus, though. Like, it doesn't just automatically start playing things real quick when you don't feel like it. It's not trying to trap you in the app. Mm. Some some of them are trying to trap you some there. Some of them do trap you in the, the app. In the instance where I don't want to read an episode title is a problem, right. then you are a little suck. Yeah. You yeah. are a little stuck. Yeah, there's a few problems with the Disney Plus system. It's lack of, like, watch list, continue watching, or, like, the, the getting it's, to the watch list It's there, but tough. it sucks. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. So there's some anyway, stuff that sucks. But the show. What but the is? show. We discussed the show. So uh, even though they are relatively self-contained, we are going to give you a quick spoiler-free review just in case you're on the fence about watching it at all and aren't sure whether it's worth it. Uh, so we're going to give you a quick spoiler-free review. Then once you hear the theme music, that's when we're going to get into the spoiler-filled section. So if you're on the fence about watching What If, quick spoiler-free review. Diana, are you liking it? Um, I will say, I guess in general, I am liking it. It is a real roller coaster of quality. Um, it started out crazy strong. I still think episode one is probably my favorite episode. And for me, it's been a down roller coaster since then, except this last episode was killer too. They really got me back. I was pretty much off the train completely. I'm like, pulled the lever, getting off here. I don't really enjoy this anymore. Mm -hmm. Last episode really brought me back in. I was enjoying it. Um, so yeah, overall it's like, it's really, it's, you know, some of the premises don't work for me, which is the episodes that really fail, but a few of premises are really fun. They really capture some of the characters so incredibly well. It's really fun how many of the actors they got here to, like, it really makes it feel more special and, like, really actually, like, connected. And you're like, oh, wow, this is a real MCU property. Like, it feels more, it feels more connected than the Netflix Marvel shows did mm-hmm. because they get all the actors to do the voices. So, so in general, I really like it. Some episodes are stellar some episodes kind of suck but they're not connected so they kind of can really switch in quality that way so i'd give it a like if you like marvel's marvel anything you'll you'll some some will be bangers some you won't like it's a real 
a real uh, platter of shows. Mm. Andrew, are you liking it? Yeah, I'm. I'm also liking it. I think I'm similar to you. I don't think I'm as negative on the middle section of it. I agree that episode one and seven that we recently watched were the better ones for sure. What were a little bit more joyous and fun. Uh, I kind of like that there is like a varying tone. So one thing that I think is nice about this uh, mini series, I guess we'll say, which is that there are a few episodes that I think just aren't for me, but I do think that there are some people out there who will enjoy them. I think that there is enough variation between the episodes that if you're into the MCU, there's going to be a couple of these that hit for you, and there's a couple of these that just won't because there is a varying enough uh, style, character choice, and taste from episode to episode. So I think that that is both its strength and its weakness is that – you know, it, it is a a, a, a mini series that's doing random things, and some of it works and some of it doesn't. But it will, which ones work and don't, will change and vary depending on who you are and what you're into and whether you want to see. You know, maybe when you're at the MCU movies, you're like, wow, I really wish things went off the deep end and were hyper violent and like this guy could kill everyone. And you want to like just see like a weird version of that in your head, and they'll have an episode like that. Or maybe you're the type of person who's like. I really want to just see like a wacky goof around, like let's have fun with this. And they offer that as well. So I, I do think it'll connect differently with different people, but there's enough joy and playfulness that it's worth watching. And if there's anything that you don't like, and I've even had this a couple times during watching it where I'm like, oh, I'm not really into this, but I'm like, oh, whatever, it'll be over in 30 minutes and we'll be on to another one. Uh, I think that they do a pretty good job of keeping them around a tight 30. Maybe they could be a few minutes less, but it's quick and breezy, and even the bad ones are kind of peppy and fast enough that I'm not really, like, I don't really feel dragged down even when they don't land. Like, I feel just kind of like, oh, this is this will be over soon, and this is fine, even when they don't land for me. I love all these points you're making for a show that I only kind of like. That's a great point about how it's not a show for one type of viewer. Yeah. Like we are like I am one type of viewer. I kind of like funner, peppier, more optimistic things, but not everyone wants that in their media and this is an anthology of what ifs and then they're un, they're not connected stories so you can do anything. So yeah, cuz the episode I liked the least, there definitely were some tweets out there that were like this episode was incredible. I loved it. So it was for somebody. Yeah. That's a very that's a very nice way of looking at it. I love that. Yeah. And you're right about the length. They can be a little shorter, but even when they're not great. They they're moving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're they're like we're not they're, gonna. They're quickly keep you paced. Here. They're quickly cut. And even even though I think they could be a few minutes shorter, they don't overstay their welcome. They're not too long. It is just like they are on the precipice of overstaying its welcome, but it never quite crosses over so far. Yeah, because pretty much everyone is like, what if we did a whole movie in 33 minutes? And I'm like, well, you're going to have to pack it in. <laughs> yeah. Gonna... yeah. So they definitely move at a pace. And that is one thing that I will say about these as well is that it does lend itself stronger if you are a big fan of the MCU. So because some of them are like, what if... Uh, and not actual episode titles, but they're trying to compress a movie or several movies worth of plot line into 30 minutes. So they are hitting just like bullet points, the quick pillars of a character's storyline, assuming that you know the default one. So there is a lot of assumptions made from this show. It is both completely self-contained and not self-contained at all. Like it, it is a story that exists in this bubble pocket universe that doesn't affect the movies or anything. But you as an audience member, it does expect you as an audience member to have a certain level of knowledge about the movies and shows and the characters. It really does. Like you can, I think you can understand every episode, even if you haven't seen the entire MCU, but it's way easier if you have and mm -hmm. way more enjoyable because you're like, I can fill in the blanks of the scenes you're skipping mm -hmm. or the ones that you've changed or I know what happened originally. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely a love letter to MCU fans. Yes. Like you got to know the MCU. Yeah, to, absolutely. To really, really enjoy this show. And can it be spoiled? Yeah, no, it's so hard to say. Like, they're not connected. They're all their own little stories. But, like, twists happen within those episodes. Twists happen within, but I would say for the most part, the biggest spoiler is the title of the episodes of the show, which, if you're not able to click fast enough and you see the title of it, then I think that that's the major spoiler. And maybe two of them have a twist spoiler in there that's kind of like a soft 
little spoiler or whatever, but for the most part, there's so, it's a self-contained anthology. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun little anthology. You guys yeah. should check it out if you like MCU, and if you're listening to this podcast, you probably do. You probably do and are, and before we get into the spoiler-filled section of the episode, uh, we want to thank our one of our sponsors and wonderful friends over at Quip. Over at Quip Toothbrushes, Andrew. When's the last time you got rewarded for brushing your teeth? Uh, recently, because I use Quip. Oh shit! Yes, I use their their smart uh, brush, which is fantastic. It connects to the Quip app with Bluetooth, so it can track uh, how well I brush, uh, like tips and tells me about my habits. I'm crushing it. Just throwing that out there. I got the Bluetooth one. I'm like, how am I doing? I connected it to the app, and the app was like, oh yeah, all green across the board. I'm like, that's how. You do it. I'm, I'm doing it right, but I'm it's so proud of you. But it's you're doing so good. It's good to have that affirmation. I could have been doing it wrong, and before I opened up the app, I'm like, "Am I?" There was a fear where I'm like, "Before I got this, I get the smart toothbrush, I connect it, and I'm like, I I hope it's not telling me I've been doing this wrong because if I have, it it's, has been a while that I've been doing it wrong. It's but been a minute, but it's also but fair enough because brushing is something you do alone in a bathroom where no one else sees. So yeah. like if someone else someone else could easily walk in and be like. What is this technique? Yeah, since I was a child, I've never had supervision while mm. I brush my teeth. I mean, they do also, uh, like Quip does actually make one that is a, a kid electric toothbrush. So if you are a kid or have kids, you can still get one from Quip. But I haven't been supervised in a while. It helps with that. I know I'm on track and doing it right, and with it connecting to the app, I also earn points as well, which I can redeem for rewards like free products, gift cards, uh, discounts, uh, and lots of cool stuff. So I like that as well. So I'm still tracking. I'm still getting my streak. I'm getting my points, and I'm going to be trading them in for rewards. And I think you bringing up kids is great because the Smart Brush is also for kids. And if you tell kids like it's a rewards program and there's challenges like streaks and stuff, your kids are going to brush their teeth more and for longer if they're going to get stuff. Gamifying stuff is very important for adults and kids as well. Especially it's a, it's for a double health. Down. Yeah, yeah especially, gamify that health. Especially for health reasons. Uh, you've got to do it. And it's not just the brush. Uh, Quip has stuff uh, beyond the brush to help complete your routine as well. They have mint or watermelon toothpaste. Uh, they have uh, a floss that's uh, refillable that is great. I really like the floss. It is Probably the most convenient and the most I've ever flossed in my life. Sometimes I've tried to deceive dentists in the past. We all lie to the dentist. We've, we've all lied to them. But there have been times where I've gone to the dentist and they're like, you floss? And I'm like, absolutely, when I absolutely did not. Uh, but now I, I recently went to the dentist, first time in a while, and uh, the dentist was, didn't say, do you floss? The dentist went, oh, you floss. And I was like, oh, 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 oh I've never heard that in my life. Oh, I've shit, you got the statement. I got the statement from the dentist, and it's because I'm using the quip floss. I've never heard it from the dentist as a statement and not a question before. So quip changed the game there. And got to say, mm. it's such a good-looking case. Nice little like travel case and, and everything. An adult, and, and you're like, oh, I'm a fancy flosser. Feeling good about it. Uh, they also have sugar-free gum gum as well. Uh, I'm back on a gum tip uh, because when I've been wearing uh, masks, I find that like my mouth gets dry. I like having a bit of gum going on. It's been a while since I've been a gum person. You know, some people are gum people. Some people are not. I'm becoming a gum person again. You're coming back. The phase is coming back now. Mm -hmm. And Quip delivers all of these things every three months from $5 and shipping is free. Free, so you can save money and skip the hustle and bustle of going to the store to get all your tooth needs. That's right. So start getting rewards for brushing your teeth today. Go to getquip.com slash TFS right now to save $10 on a Quip Smart Electric Toothbrush. That's $10 off a Smart Electric Toothbrush at getquip.com slash TFS. That's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash TFS. Quip the Good Habits Company, and thank you very much, Quip, for your support. Thank you, Quip. And now let's get into the episode. Let's talk about what if. So we've seen episodes one to seven uh, of What If We Are Mixed Bag Liking It So Far. I think it started with a bang. 
Oh, uh, such a bang. Let's talk about, so episode one, what if Captain Carter were the first Avenger? What if uh, What if Captain Carter became, Cap, well, Captain Carter became Captain Britain in this scenario? Yeah. yeah. I loved this episode. It came in so hot. It's so fast. Peg, Peggy, as with superpowers, is so jo- so much more joyful than I thought she would be. And she has such a sense of humor and such like, she finds so much joy in fighting Nazis, <laughs> but also just in being powerful. Like it's such a more interesting story. Yeah, than, I agree. Than Steve, like not that Steve's story isn't interesting, but like it takes that story into such an interesting way of like the first super soldier. And it's, and it is, obviously they're going through the beats of his story, but with her. But it's varied enough, and I think they have a strong enough understanding of her as a character that it becomes her own, and it has unique characteristics and things to it. So that's one thing that I really like about it, is that it's not just a, like, we're going to do all the exact same things, but it is a different character, a different sense of humor, a different style, and, like, hitting some similar fence posts, uh, but with its own angle on it. It does feel very Peggy. It feels very Peggy, but in a way that I haven't seen her before. Not that she's, like... She's not really funny, but she's like a little snarky in the in the movies. And I just feel like this is actually what the character would be like if she got superpowers. Mm. Um, like, you know, she's been working. She has to work so hard against everything against her in the time. She's a woman in war at a time when women can't fight. So, you know, as much as Steve was small, he was still a white guy who got respect automatically. So for her to be in this position of being like, yes, I can actually fight now. I can make a difference. No one can disrespect me. It, It is absolutely such an interesting take and it really would change her personality of like, I'm more loose now. I'm not so reserved. I don't have to be as careful about what I say to make sure I don't get demoted mm-hmm. or I don't get disrespected. It's... It's such an interesting story, and also just they made it so fun. And the romance between the two of them. I I really love how they played the romance between the two of them. It does a really good job of, like, flipping the power dynamics between them, but showing why in their heart and core of core these two are connected and belong together. You know, like, it really, it really does work. It really does work because Steve was already into Peggy when she was kind of stronger than him physically back when he was small. Mm. So she, he'd still be so into her when she was big. Yeah. <laughs> he'd be like, ooh, double the Peggy, double the fun for I, Steve. Absolutely. <laughs> and she, like, already respected him. So, yeah, nothing changes for their dynamic except they're still super cute together. I, I might even, and maybe this is just because there's less time spent with Bucky and Steve in this one, but I might even buy their relationship more in this scenario than I did in the mainline MCU. Uh, and like, granted, I think that Steve is a bisexual character who is in love with both Bucky and Peggy. We are um, we are aligned in this thought, yes. Yeah, and I think that he would be happy with either one of them in life. But in this scenario, maybe it's just because there's less time and obsession spent with Bucky, but like, it, it, it hits harder, where I'm like, oh, Peggy actually wins by an inch on this one. That makes sense, because... Because Steve doesn't get to be the protagonist in this. He doesn't get to go save Bucky. And we don't Mm. see things through Steve's point of view. So there's way less Bucky in the story. Right. So I think that makes sense that their relationship seems to work better when Bucky's not around cock blocking. And there's one scene where he like literally just cock blocks them. He like taps on the window so they can't kiss. Right. And it's like, Steve, you're being torn between two beautiful people. Uh, Great options all mm, around. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like we're really happy whatever you go with. Like, What I like about thinking about the Peggy episode is that she's the one who gets sent into the future. So I'm like, Steve and Bucky are together in Mm. World War II. No Peggy. They're living happily ever after, my friend. I see what you're saying. I want the what if of that continued story. Now, if I remember correctly, in that episode, Peggy's the one there when she's and she saves Bucky, right? Um... She said, yeah, yeah she, she goes and she, pulls him out. Yeah. Right, right, right. And like, you know, Steve is coming in, I think a few moments afterwards in the armor or whatever. But it seems less 
romantic of a tie between Steve and Bucky because it's not like I love you, I saved you. Uh, no, it's and, like, and I love you, I sent my girlfriend to save you. Yeah, and it's, it's mo- and it's more of a moment of Bucky being like, "Cool girlfriend, bro." Like it does feel it feels more like a platonic friendship between Bucky and Steve and less like genuine romance. So I buy Peggy and Steve's romance so much in this episode. It hits so hard. It hits so hard. But what's interesting about when you compare it to like the Steve Bucky of the original is that the things that happen to Steve are the things that happened to Bucky in the original. So Steve mm. falls off the train and gets captured by Hydra. Right. But he's the love interest. Right. And that's what Bucky did in the original movie. So does that mean Bucky was the love interest? Interesting. In Cap Interesting. One? A subtle, a perhaps subtle agreement that Bucky was the love interest. Bucky is absolutely one of the love interests. Like, it is the exact same in the first movie. Like, you know, Bucky falls off a train and is gone forever. So, of course, he's with Peggy. But Bucky doesn't fall off that train. You're like... I don't know who he ends up with. Mm, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think this show is saying. I I can mess with that. I I, I also want to say, too, that uh, Haley Atwell's performance is really, really good because I think that there is a a difference between a a performer with range and good casting. And good casting isn't necessarily a negative reflection on the performer. I think that there are a lot of actors in the MCU who are very well cast – who couldn't necessarily play a different character in the MCU. Still great actors, but they were cast in the right part. But Haley Atwell in this character, it is more it is more charm, it is more charisma, it is more humor. It is a different version and Haley Atwell has the range to perform it and is also a very talented voice actor, not only having the range to perform a different a version of this character that feels like it has a, a, a different journey and arc, but to be able to convey it with just her voice as well. Haley Atwell really, really shines. Haley Atwell does really shine, yeah. I'm not gonna... I'm not going to, I didn't write them as they happen, but a few of the MCU actors are not nearly as good in the booth. I think they need other actors to play off of. Absolutely. They're not good solo. Mm-hmm. Um, and she did, but she did crush it. She found the joy of this new Peggy. She had a great performance. She was, she was all around fantastic. I'm so happy she got to do this. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I feel like I didn't see her doing like, no one really did press for this, but like, I really would have, I would like to like read mm-hmm. an interview with her about like how she felt doing this new Peggy. Yeah. New yeah. Peggy's great. It's a, it's a variation. And I will say we, like, we've talked a little bit in the past about like the difference between a voice actor and an on-camera actor. And some people can do both and some people can only do one. And it's not necessarily a slam. Some people are just more expressive and emotive with their, with their facial expression and eyebrows. And you know, some there people are, need people in this room with them. Some people, yeah. Some people need people in the room with them and some people can do do, you know, with an eyebrow movement more than some actors can with a soliloquy. But I think that Haley Atwell and with some of the stage performers, so I think some of the on-camera performers who are also trained stage actors, they typically transition a little bit better to voice acting just because they're a little bit bigger and broader and they know how to sell variation to the back row, which is done with the voice bit more a bit more than the face. Whereas actors who aren't stage actors and who are just on camera actors are relying a little bit more on their expression and a little bit more on on you as an audience member reading from their face what they want you to, you know? I can totally get behind that because we're not on his episodes yet. But I think the other breakout of like the actual MCU actors to me was uh, Tom Hiddleston, who was mm. a huge theater actor. Yeah. So I think that I think that makes a lot of sense. I do have one negative for sure, this one. And sure. that'll probably be my last thing about the, the Captain Carter episode. It's not even really a negative, but it's just a little thing in the back of my mind that bothers me. There is this slight kind of lingering sexism in this episode, despite it being an episode about like strong Peggy, cool Peggy, in that they're like mirroring a lot of beats of Cap 1. But Steve gets an Iron Man suit and Peggy didn't get an Iron Man suit in Cap 1. It right. felt and when I when I really feel in my heart I'm like it felt like you weren't willing to let Steve just do the little things Peggy got to do in Cap 1. You're like, "Well, Steve yeah. needs to do cool stuff." I'm like, "Well, that's not what Peggy got to do in Cap 1. She got to shoot like one gun." Yeah. <laughs> and you know, she gave good speeches and she was cool. I love Peggy. But yeah, it felt like a little like, well, we got to give him something to do. Like he's, he's a Steve, dude. He's Steve Rogers. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, but, like, yeah, but she's why would she's he... Peggy fucking Carter. Yeah, so like you give Peggy superpowers, then you're like, oh, by the way, Steve is the first Iron Man is way stronger than her. I'm like, that's bullshit. 
That's bullshit, and yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. I wouldn't say he's stronger than her, but yes, yeah, he's he's, he's in an a, Iron Man suit. It's some busted old Iron Man <laughs> made by Howard Stark. It's not as good. Current Iron Man could yeah, barely right, take right, on. Right. It's more like uh, Desert Captain Iron America. Man. Yeah. All right, but yeah. still very yeah. powerful. Mm-hmm. They call him a Hydra Buster. He can fly. Yeah, that's true. But it's also so cute when they're flight when they're fighting all the planes together in the sky. So it's only a minor negative because I think it works for their romance and it's really cute. Right. But I do think there is a touch of sexism there of we won't make the boys do what we made the girls do. I fully agree. I I fully completely agree. I think that at best and I don't think this is drawn attention to and I don't think it was the intention so it's certainly not an excuse but there's part of me that's like Howard Stark would give Steve a suit of armor and not Peggy that even though he's friends with Peggy I feel like if there's like is there a sexist man on camera right now oh of course it's the Starks yeah yeah so yeah, 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 yeah. it does logically track but I don't think that was the intention and there was no commentary and no lantern hung on that and it was just the show being like well we've got to have Steve be cool. He's got to be around or she doesn't have a love interest. Mm. So I get, I get it. But at the same time, I'm like, mm, might do better in the movies. They actually, I will give them huge redemption points for the episode we just watched, so episode seven, which was crazy powerful lady heavy. Yes, that is true. So we'll get into that in a second. Yeah, so that's very. So, so episode one, we loved. Uh, episode two was what if T'Challa became a Star-Lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that one was fun. I, re- I really liked episode two. I, really I liked, liked it a bit more than you, I think. You did like it a bit more than me. I still liked it, but it was like I was riding such a high off the Peggy episode, which I found flawless, mm-hmm. that like some of the Star-Lord stuff as T'Challa, I was like, I don't believe Thanos is a henchman. I just like, I'm sorry, I'm no fun sometimes. Just a few things didn't quite track for me. But overall, I thought it was really fun. I really liked these... I think the episodes that work best are these first two where it's like, what if this hero was the other hero? Right. And that's all the what if is. It's not like this pessimistic everyone dies bullshit that we're going to get into in a minute with like four in a row of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's very much just like, what if, t- and what I, it's great about this is what if T'Challa was Star-Lord, a much better superhero. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> than the original one, which is kind of rude, but I like it. Rude but fair. Rude but fair. T'Challa yeah. would be incredible. He would rule the galaxies. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this one was really fun. It was it was believable that this is what T'Challa would be like in space. Mm. Um, every episode with Chadwick Boseman broke me down into tears, but he did an incredible job. Another another incredible voice performer. Like I felt like I was watching Black Panther, like yeah. His performance sounded kind of like the exact same in a good way as his movie performances. I, I fully agree with that. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it was aligned. It was mm-hmm. well aligned. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? What were you liking about it? Uh, for that, like, I was I was into the T'Challa Became Star-Lord episode. Uh, agree with you on the Bozeman thing. I, I, I mean, there were so many tweets kind of going out around this episode. I didn't realize that this wasn't Bozeman's last thing. Like, Bozeman yeah. is still around doing other voices in the other episodes, which is fantastic. Uh, but I really thought that this was like the final hurrah and was kind of a like, oh, he's still. So I was kind of surprised that uh, they still uh, had him around in other episodes, which is great. Uh, but I really like this episode. I like what you didn't about this one. I think, and if anything, I think that this series could go sillier and more nonsense. Whereas the the first one and some of them are very much like, what if we change one tiny thing and let's very seriously it, it like inspect every little thing that would change. And in this one, it's just like, I don't know, T'Challa's fun. Now Thanos is nice. Don't fucking worry about it. Shut up. Like, I really. I'm worried about I it. I like that energy of just this show just being like, I don't know, T'Challa was nice to a dude once and now there's not genocide. Fucking be cool. And You're going to complain about no genocide? That is a I don't fun, know why we're from New York. I don't now. know why I like that, but that is a fun energy to me. And then constantly hanging a hat on it as well and like having background Thanos be like, no, 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 no. It's because it would be random, you see. <laughs> but he's doing it over drinks. Drinks and shit, like it's really, really funny. I I liked them just kind of like lingering on that. It all it all worked for me. I enjoy it being a little bit sillier and uh, a little bit less of a of a close inspection of what would change. Now, hear me out. This because I feel like I'm a fun person. Mm. I'm not not fun, and I think the Thor party episode really worked and was a very fun episode. I agree. The Thor party episode is that turned up to twelve. Yeah, and I think because it's turned up at twelve, I think it worked better because the T'Challa one 
it, it, I actually thought that was a close introspection. I'm like, I believe that all of these people would change for T'Challa except Thanos. Like, mm. I think he would make uh, Yondu a better person. I do think he could, like, turn the Ravagers around. So to me, it actually was, like, a genuine close inspection of him, mm. except for the Thanos part. And that's why... So that's why I couldn't go full fun because I'm like, they've done a great job of really beating out how T'Challa would change the entire galaxy if he was Star-Lord. Right. So I didn't, I didn't feel like it went full just like, let's have fun. Okay. But it was fun because I think the, uh, the collector was probably my favorite part though. He's, I don't know who Benicio paid to be like, I want 18 abs. I want to be twice the size as I was in the movie. Jacked collector. I want to have Mjolnir. I want to have the Infinity Gauntlet. Or what did he have? He had Hella's horns. He had fucking everything. (laughs) Like, Earth is decimated. Everyone is dead except for the characters that, except for, uh, you know, T'Challa, Star-Lord, and the Ravagers. Everyone else in this universe seems to be completely dead because uh, the Collector has literally all the things. Uh, I wrote down a few of them so we can verify this. He has Hela's crown, he had Mjolnir, and he had Cap Shield. But mm. at the end of the episode, we go to Earth and Wakanda's fine. Right. So I don't know what the Collector did. Right. Or who he killed or when he got these things, but... Get that handful of stuff was, or whatever. That was fun, and I believed that. Mm. So this was the, this was my favorite section, the, the jacked collector, all of his weapons fight. I think that, this was ridiculous in a way that I'm like, I guess if the collector just worked out a bit. And this, and this was one, too, that I'm like, I don't think Benicio remembers w- what he did as the collector. <laughs> I think if you asked him if he was in the MCU, he'd say he wasn't. He'd forget, <laughs> yeah. He'd be like, no, when not we, me, not when, Benicio. When we talk about T'Challa being consistent, well, like Chadwick Boseman like showing up and being like, I know T'Challa's voice and cadence and rhythm, and I could do it in my sleep. Mm-hmm. Benicio showed up and was like, I have no idea what I've been hired for. I don't remember doing this role. It's Disney. Is this the one where I stuttered? And someone was like, that was Star Wars. No, and this he's is like, the one where you mumbled. And he's like, I don't know. I'm just going to do whatever. And you guys try to keep up. Mm-hmm. He does not give a fuck. He doesn't. Let me throw this theory out for you, though, because like you're right, he doesn't sound like the character from the Nothing. movies in any way. But he is in a voice booth where he's just doing a voice with a director telling him to voice things, and he's and if, he's probably like he does the mumbly, the mumbly collector voice that he does, and then the voice director's like, we couldn't hear any of that, Benicio. You got to yeah. do it again. Please enunciate and say it. Good. <laughs> you got to enunciate. This is voice acting. Yeah. We can't see your little face performance going on oh god Benicio (laughs) is just doing everything and it is wild he he will not play the same character twice all right and he didn't (laughs) all right so that's the the Chala becomes Star-Lord episode all right then we get uh what if the world lost its mightiest heroes which is the one where all of the Avengers are killed (laughs) Uh, do not like this episode. I, this, this is the start where everything goes downhill for me. This Mm. is the first of four episodes where we kill most of the Avengers. Okay, yeah. So this got, this episode didn't get repetitive for me, but this theme really bored the hell out of me of what if tons of Avengers die every episode. Right. Um, and this one was kind of like the worst of it. It was these kind of like not interesting deaths of the Avengers, but also still kind of brutal and like just ways I don't want, like the Hulk exploded from the inside. And I'm like, I like Bruce. I don't want this fate for him. Like he's a nice man. Yeah. And they basically without humor did with the Hulk, the what if (laughs) Ant-Man went up Thanos's ass, uh, internet theory of killing Thanos, but it was with the Hulk and it was with, uh, Hank Pym, Ant-Man. Which, vindication to the Ant-Man, Thanos people, I think yeah. proves it would work. Yeah, to the Thanos-ass Ant-Man people, I hope you feel good. But, you know, all we've proven is you can also just go in through a, a cut or an ear. Yeah, you didn't need do... to go through the butt. And, and You I, don't need to go through the butt, guys. Yeah. I think that if, if this wasn't several episodes of this, mm-hmm. of this similar, like, let's go for a brutal kill spree kind of a premise... I feel like there is a, a a value 
to this episode. I don't think it's the best one, but it's a classic comic book storyline. Your your uh, Tower of Babel Batman storyline, or like, how do you kill each Avenger? Exactly. Yeah. Like, and it's just be like, oh, that like what is what is a hero's weakness? And we kind of go through and explore that. That's fun. To a certain degree. To a certain degree. Most of the Avengers are regular people. I knew how to kill them. Mm -hmm. I mean, he kills Tony and Hawkeye just by walking in their ears. I'm like, yeah, they're humans. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But also, you shouldn't be able to do that. It's like, with a little bit of Stark tech, Falcon was able to see Ant-Man. You know? Yeah, I guess. But he knew. uh, He didn't know. They didn't know there was tiny people yet. All right. Yeah. They didn't know you could get small yeah, yet Falcon, when Falcon could Fal- see him. Falcon with a human gun was just like, no, gonna, I think I got it. I'm going to shoot you I with get my it. bullet. I'll shoot an ant with a bullet. It still works, and it does still work, or it could still work. Yeah, but it's not uh, – yeah, it's not – it's not a thing I need to see happen. It is, and also like I didn't really believe some of the motivations. Like, yeah, Hank Pym killing the Avengers because Hope was killed. Sure, mm-hmm. he kind of really like pushed it and like, why'd you kill Thor? He's like, he could have become an Avenger. He's like this yeah. regular human without his hammer. He's like, what? Yeah, that's why you killed Thor. Like this dude who just showed up on Earth a second ago. Like he'd been here for five seconds. And. I also think one of the other frustrating things about this episode and about its framing device, uh, which doesn't really work for me, is that the entire conceit of these what ifs is it is the universe as we know it. What if, insert change, continue the story from there? And I don't think they found, like, they, they weren't sure how to reveal this in an interesting way because the what if isn't the what if of the episode. So the episode's what if the world lost its mightiest heroes, which implies that the story is like the Avengers die, who protects the earth, who are the next Avengers, how do we move on? The what if is what if Hope Van Dyne joins S.H.I.E.L.D.? That and is she, the what And if. she dies and then Hank Pym goes crazy and kills the Avengers. But that reveals the killer. That, uh, yes. Kind of. Yeah, and, but I don't think the the murder mystery was the fun part of this episode. So it's just a really awkward framing device where it's, what if we lied to you about the what if and showed up to the what if too late? But lies aren't twists. As we've said on the network many times, lies aren't twists. And this whole what if, its big twist is that it lies to us about the what if and that's super dumb, and I find it really annoying. Yeah, if the, if it's what if the Avengers all died, they should all die in the same freak accident in the first five minutes. Yes. And then the world deals with that. Yeah, and it's like we need to call up new Avengers and, like, yeah, do some different shit. And it also doesn't, like, just structurally it doesn't work because for most of the episode, Black Widow is your POV character. Mm. We're with her through all of it. Tony's death, Hawkeye's death. She's solving it. She figures it out. Then with like 10 minutes left, she dies. And now Fury's the main character. Yeah. And then it's also kind of Loki. And it's like the the POV just doesn't work yeah. through, through, the, through the story. Yeah. One positive, absolutely huge positive. Lake Bell is incredible as Black Widow. Yes. Oh my God. She was Oh, the best black, like, you thought it was Scarlett Johansson, I remember, because yes. we didn't check the credits. And I'm like, she's not this funny, because and she's not this good. We knew that Chris Evans wasn't doing uh, Steve, and, and we, the, the the person who voices Steve does a fine job. Oh, yeah. We knew that RDJ wasn't doing Tony, and again, the person doing Tony, doing a solid voice match of RDJ, fine work. Lake Bell is doing doing God's work. I Like, I didn't believe in God until hearing Lake Bell do Black Widow. And it is exactly Scarlett Johansson, but better. It's kind of embarrassing for Scarlett Johansson to be like... A little bit. You can just be replaced by Lake Bell right now. In a second. Yeah, like it sounds like her, but like just the performance is like more full and believable and feels like a real person, but also still feels like Natasha. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. And for you guys who don't know, Lake Bell also does Poison Ivy in the Harley Quinn show. And yeah. she's just as good. She is Chef's Kiss. She's so good at playing redhead badasses, you guys. <laughs> she's got it nailed down. Yeah, like if 
if Scarlett Johansson figured out Black Widow as a character, and Black Widow as a character has a range that exists from one to ten, Scarlett Johansson has only ever performed that character from four to eight. From like a you know like oh weird ha- middle range. Yeah, has never <laughs> gone to either extreme. Lake Bell showed up and was like, I can do every new. I know who this character is as well as you, <laughs> but I can hit every nuance of it, and in thirty minutes. And it is a phenomenal and a wild ride of a performance. So this will be, yeah, this is my biggest positive of uh, this episode. I didn't enjoy very much. Lake Bell crushing it. Thank you for for bringing that up. I feel, frankly, embarrassed that I almost forgot to say how absolutely terrific that Lake Bell is. This is why I take notes. <laughs> you are Yo. you are better than me. I'm so literate. Uh, all right. Well, let's take a quick break in the podcast to thank our other wonderful sponsor of today's episode. I want to thank our friends over at NordVPN. NordVPN, going to keep you safe. They're like a cyber Swiss army knife. They're going to protect your privacy. Mm -hmm. They're going to protect your computer for privacy. Yeah. And they're going (laughs) to... And they're going to allow you to access perhaps region lock content that you might not be able to access wherever you are. So there's a lot of different things that it's going to provide you. Uh, you need a VPN, and NordVPN offers a fantastic service. Uh, we use it here. It, it's it's given great speed, great security, great protection, and allows us to skirt around things that maybe maybe companies don't want us to watch here in Canada. So You can't stop us, companies. That's we can right. Th- we can see things in 59 different countries with NordVPN. Absolutely. And and we should be able to see the things. Yeah. Geostrictions should not be an issue, and they no longer are. You can change your location with one click. It's super easy. VPN sound complicated? Yeah. Not. You, 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 you download it. You click one button, you tell what country you want to be in, and that's the country you're in. Nord has done 100% of the complicated things for you. It is, yeah, it is boiled down to the simplest thing possible. It is just an app. You just need to install it on your computer. You can get it on your phone, your tablets, whatever devices it is that you're running, and it's just going to be a couple of clicks. That's all that's to it. I open it up, and it's like, where do you want to go? And I start typing in United States, and I get you, and it's like, yeah, we got you. And it's just happening. It's just already happening it's, and then it goes to their satellites on Mars I don't know how nor does it but it does it and then it goes to a different place and then it's done and then we get to watch us content that's geo restricted and mm-hmm. you can have one account on up to six devices devices as Andrew said so one account covers all of your stuff you're gonna be so good and it's the fastest VPN in the world so you're gonna be speeding around that internet just zip zooming and I I love it uh, so easy so secure and uh, I'm watching all kinds of stuff <laughs> Damn you companies that forget Canada exists. Because sometimes it's not about getting other country stuff. Sometimes it's just like you go to watch a thing and we're in Canada and it's just like, oh, you can't watch that. And I'm like, well, where do I watch it? And they're like, uh, nowhere. We just it's forgot. We forgot about you, Canada. I'm like, come on. My American, we're, we're my right American friends are tweeting about it. I want to see what people are tweeting about. Uh, so NordVPN is a fantastic service that we use regularly. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to nordvpn.com slash TFS uh, or use promo code TFS to get 73% off a two-year plan plus four bonus months for free. Uh, be quick because this offer is for a limited time only. So once again, that's nordvpn.com slash TFS or use promo code TFS, 73% off a two-year plan, four bonus months for free. Check it out. And thank you, NordVPN, for your support. That's such a high percent. It's a very high That's percent. That's more of a percent than you'd think. That's a lot of them. Way to go, NordVPN. What if NordVPN gave you a <laughs> very high percent? percent off. Woo. <laughs> All right. Back to what if. Uh, the next episode, we're just kind of like uh, chopping through the episodes here, is the, the what if Doctor Strange lost his heart instead of his hands oh. episode. Which, oh boy. Mm-hmm, sure. Oh boy. And how's that going for you? It was rough. This one was like hard to watch. This is the highest rated episode of it. What? People loved this episode. Oh, I'm so, I, I mean, I don't want to tell you not to like things, but I, and I won't. I just don't get it. Mm. Like, good for you if you enjoyed it. I'm so glad. Because, like, there's nothing problematic wrong with it. Like, it's, like, it's a totally fine episode of magic magic things happen. But, but it's cheesy and bad. And it's it- cheesy and bad. And its core premise 
absolutely does not work. Right. Because we were laughing out loud at its core premise. And and what's amazing is I do understand some of the appeal of this episode and why it's so high rated. People love Doctor Strange. People love Doctor Strange. And people also love in any fandom, in any canon, when a broken, powerful character goes broken, powerful. Whoever it is, whatever the scenario, there is something wildly fun about being like, I always knew this dude could just end every fight. And the, then you you explore that. It's over 9,000. Yeah. We love when we it's over 9,000. We love 9, seeing someone's power level. And there is an inherent in, appeal in that. But the whole, uh, is Rachel is her name? Uh, Christine. Christine. I don't know why I thought it was Rachel. Rachel's the actress. Rachel Cups. Now, Rachel McAdams is the actress. You had a reason. Yeah. Uh, so th- her dying is nothing. <laughs> but but it's so nothing. But it's, the whole point is, what if she died? What if he lost his heart? She's not his heart. They mm. are barely, they're barely a couple in the movie. They're not a couple in the MCU. They don't even date at the end of the movie. It's whatever. But for this episode to have the Ancient One say, you can't save her. Her death is a fixed point or else you don't become Doctor Strange where we are from a universe where she didn't die and he became Doctor Strange. Right. There's other reasons for him to become Doctor Strange. There, it's absolutely not a fixed point. Mm-hmm. It is your whole your whole premise is flawed. Yeah. It's abs- and also, she didn't go with them that night. They weren't in love. Like, you've changed, like, five things. Mm-hmm. It's a what if one thing changed. Mm-hmm. What if they were actually in love? What if she was the, the focal point of him becoming a thing? What if he didn't care about his hands, I guess? <laughs> yeah, because in the regular universe, they're not in love at that point. No. One would argue they're not in love at any point. They are romantically interested. They are, they dated before the movie starts. Mm-hmm. And when the movie starts, they have broken up and they're still like friendly. Yes. And he's like still like. He and there like, is tension. There's romantic there's tension. There's tension and caring and understanding. They understand and respect each other. But they are, I mean, there's a reason they have no chemistry. There's a reason Rachel McAdams has never been brought up throughout the entire MCU, even though Doctor Strange shows up everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, there's, it's. It's such a weird premise to come off of. And he doesn't do enough. We were laughing so hard when he does eventually, like, go back in time. And Mm -hmm. he's like, okay, I'm going to make sure she doesn't die that night. And he does everything the same, even with all those same memories. But he's like, I can't remember what it was, but it was like, I'm going to change lanes a little safer. (laughs) He didn't drive as fast. He's like, what if I don't pass the truck? That's what did it. And And I'm sorry, this wasn't him experimenting with time travel. This, like, to be like, I need to not change a lot to make sure there's no crazy power. This was him just being like, no, I do still want to speed a little bit on that country road. Like, th- which is the most I don't love you dick move possible. To be like, I don't love you enough to never speed. I do love you enough to speed until the confirmed point when I murder you. Then I won't speed. But assuming they did live that day, I don't love you enough to not speed in the future. Like, I will drive recklessly with you in the car in the very near future. I have mourned your death for years and learned the arts of magic so that I can time travel to save you. But I still want to speak at that conference that we're going to. I still need to. I still need to show up at that conference. You might die. Like I haven't worked out all the kinks of why you died that night. But I still need to like go do the conference. Yeah. If that's cool. Apparently. Apparently. Even then, though I could teleport there at this point, he, he can teleport. He tries like three different ways to drive there before he even yeah. tries not bringing her. Not driving. Yeah. <laughs> he tries like, well, what if I just went a little bit slower? What if I went faster? Like, he keeps driving. He's still doing it like an idiot. <laughs> and then the ridiculous way she starts dying, I just like. I the think it's hip- supposed I, to be sad, she, but it was... I think it is supposed to be sad, but we were... 
It was pure Groundhog Day, like, dark comedy, but it was Groundhog Day comedy to be like, I'm living this day over and over again. How hilariously can I die? Did one time she choke on some shrimp or she something? Ch- I think she choked on something. The bus was the one that really made me bust a nut laughing. I don't remember the bus. What happened? I think she just got hit by a bus. <laughs> Where he was like, no thank you, no car. And then she was just like, okay, slipsy doodle. And like got hit by a bus. It was pure comedy. So funny. Such comedy garbage. But so like unintentionally funny. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, yeah. And like it's kind of cool when he goes and absorbs a bunch of demons to make himself sure. more powerful. But I'm just like, whatever, it's magic gobbledygook. You then you fight yourself and you eat yourself and then the universe dies and it's a little sad and, and the watcher can't help you. It's, yeah. It was just, to me, it was nothing. I, happy for you guys who liked it. I don't get it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I don't I, get it. Yeah, it's the him splitting himself into, or I guess the Eternal One splitting him into. So now there's two him on a single timeline, which is all dumb. I I, I think that my favorite part was him just flat out acknowledging the Watcher, and that actually Ooh, that gave cool. me a little chills to be cool. like, oh fuck, he sees the dude. Yeah. No one sees the dude. When he ate enough demons to make himself power self powerful enough to see the Watcher. Mm. That actually was pretty dope. That was me being like, it's 9,000. <laughs> that was my moment. Yeah. Of I like seeing a broke, powerful dude. Yeah. But I don't care about this whole time machine storyline. Yeah, the time machine storyline just uh, just didn't work. Didn't just work didn't for work me. for me. Uh, and then the the next one, we've been laughing so hard at the just the title of the next one of What If Zombies? <laughs> I actually love this title, though. It's, I love that they were just like, it's not even a sentence. It's the only one that's not a sentence. It's the only one that is not a sentence, and it also is the only one with an intero bang. Like, it's the only one of, what if, zombies? Like, it's the only one that kind of yells a question. Not if, not if the Avengers became zombies, just simply, what if, zombies? Because more than the Avengers become zombies. That is Regular true. Regular humans also. Regular you get humans real, you get real fucked when the Avengers become zombies. Because mm-hmm. then you got powerful zombies. So the zombie episode, uh, so like we saw with the Lost at the Mightiest Heroes and with the Doctor Strange losing his mind thing, like some crazy murder fantasy episodes. This one is a little that, but a bit more playful. I actually had a pretty good time with What If Zombies. I know this like middle section of episodes we both agree lulls a bit, but this was a little bit more fun than the rest. I actually had a pretty good time. I actually also had fun with zombies. I think think we killed the Avengers too much, but if you're going to kill the Avengers anywhere, it's going to be zombies. And also, you know, Marvel zombies is a thing. I've read a few of them. They're kind of fun. If you're doing a zombie episode, you know the Avengers are going to die. It's not going to take you by surprise and make you really sad like in the other ones. So yeah, this, this was actually really fun. I actually quite enjoyed this one. This one was fun because... You got to watch like all the heroes deal with zombies and kill some of their friends as zombies and be like sad but not sad and like horror tropes. But it also had heart like hell. Spider Man was incredible in this. Absolutely incredible. So to do a zombie episode where you're like, ooh, gory zombies and ooh, horror tropes, and then also be like, oh shit, my heart. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah, because Spider Man was uh, was beautiful. I'm trying to remember who it was he was having the speech with. Uh, uh, he was saying it to Hope because she was infected right. and she was like, she wanted to save everyone while she was dying. Yeah. And they were like, how are you so optimistic? And he's like, well, my Aunt May used to say, she's like, oh, I guess he's gone. Well, but she used to say, if we're not. If we're only sad that the people we love are gone, we might as well just be sad or something like that. Or like right. we, they they would want us to be happy. Right. We might as well be with them if we're just sad that they're gone. Right. Right. So like that's it was it was fra- I, can't, I wish I'd I can't remember. Yeah, I wish I'd written it down as well. It was, it was well, pure it, Spider-Man. Yeah. It was it was condensed. Tap it into my veins. Uh, just pure Spider-Man extract all in the, in this <laughs> one beautiful moment. Uh, and then some fun stuff too, with like uh, with uh, Wasp becoming giant. But then she gets well. zombified. Yeah. And she's a giant. That was really cool. I got what I need. Uh, I got Bucky with a shield. Mm-hmm. Uh, love seeing Bucky. Love seeing the the Wakandans around all the time. Being like we're survivors. We're the Wakandans. You right. Can't, you can't keep us down. Paul Rudd in a head jar. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Rudd in a head jar was great. <laughs> Anyone's gonna be in a head jar, and then having the cape like float him around so he had a body. 
I loved, I, I loved Scott Lang in the cape. Scott Lang, Hedjar in the cape is, I wanna see those ongoing adventures. It's wild that Spider-Man had to do like a speech about like, you just keep your optimism it's, and everyone's like, it's hard, but we'll do it. And then Scott Lang is like, I don't even have a body, but I'm still Scott Lang. Do, 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 do. I didn't even hear that speech about optimism. Do, 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 in a jar. Do, 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 do. Relatively unfazed. <laughs> he is rolling with the punches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is dumb, but really fun. But like, it's a fun, like throwaway episode. You're like zombies. You're not recovering from. No, um, I am. I'm not mad, but this was another episode where at the end you asked if I was okay. Cause I started crying about Chadwick Boseman mm. <laughs> because he did a speech about how people are still with you even after they die in the afterlife. And I'm like, not right now, Chadwick Boseman. I'm watching a zombie episode of fun stuff. Chadwick. I'm just trying to have fun. And yeah. I'm sad about Chadwick. RIP. I am genuinely always sad about I'm Chadwick. Chadwick Boseman. I'm trying to remember who was who was uh, who were the zombie survivors at the end of that episode. It was Spider Man. It was Spider Man, Scott's head, Scott's head with and, the cape, and uh, T'Challa. And T'Challa were the only survivors. Were the only. Things. We kind of didn't see Hulk or Bucky die, but it's implied they're dead. Okay. They get swarmed. Gotcha. So it's Wakanda with three heroes versus a zombie world and a zombie Thanos. Mm-hmm. So they fucked. Yeah, they I fucked. don't think they're. Well, I think the. I think the ending implied that they got fucked because uh, Thanos had all the stones and they needed the Mind Stone to create the cure. Oh, did Thanos have all of them at the end? Oh, did he not have all No, them? I thought he just had the oh. ones that he had in the movie by the time when he, he got showed there? up to right. Earth. Fair enough. Yeah. Either way, that's that's going to be hard to beat. Yeah, yeah. I did enjoy the children of Thanos getting all eaten up in that first sequence and like... You know, like uh, 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 the funny Bruce of being like, guys, oh, too much, oh, no, too no, much. No, no, oh god, oh god. Was that Ruffalo? I it think was, that was Ruffalo. Ruffalo. Yeah, yeah, Ruffalo did a really good job. I don't Ru- know how I feel about you being able to use your concentration powers when you're a zombie. Mm. Like, I don't think Zombie Strange can make portals. None of it works or makes sense I, if you even think about it a little. I wouldn't be a nerd if I didn't nitpick these things, Andrew. Right, like, like Friday as an AI is not letting Zombie Stark control that armor in no scenario he doesn't have a jaw or eyes and it is a floating user interface interface that reacts to where he looks within the helmet mm. and he's not wearing his helmet and his eyes don't have pupils and anymore he probably doesn't have a heartbeat no it doesn't have a heartbeat uh, there's no any touch sensors on his phone doesn't work because there is no mm-hmm. warmth to his fingers or blood you're making some and great Friday, points. none of it makes any sense why thanos would still be able to use an infinity gauntlet or care about one is completely insane I, I think that if he has enough thought to continue to search for the stones, he should just be like, was this good enough for me? Is the zombie virus balancing the universe in itself? I mean, it probably... Uh... The zombies are using less resources and will reach a point of balance. I guess maybe. Maybe. It's hard to say, like, because that's not like half the people on Earth. That's just wiping out Earth. Mm. But it might reach a point of balance event. Like, we will just disintegrate eventually as zombies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it might do it. I don't know. I don't, it might It might do the trick for him. We'll see if Thanos is happy about it. Yeah. We'll find out. All right. All right. So I think uh, then the next episode was the what if Killmonger rescued Tony Stark. I didn't care for this episode. It was a little bland. It was a little, it was a little bland and it was actually the one I was most excited about. Mm. Um, I thought this was two different explorations that were going to be really interesting and neither one was interesting at all. Right. I thought this was going to be either an exploration of what's Killmonger like as a hero. He saves Tony and right. like he actually has resources and a mentor who believes in him and someone who will like help him do the things he wants to achieve, which is help the oppressed. Like, right. oh, this is going to be Killmonger as a superhero. And he was still just a villain. Mm. Or it was going to be what's Tony Stark going to be like if he never goes in the cave? Mm. Like if he never becomes Iron Man, like how evil would he get? He doesn't see the folly of his ways. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, so it's one or both of these two things. Like Killmonger will be the hero and Iron Man will be the villain or something. And it's really just, oh no, they're still the same. Like Tony's still a nice guy. Killmonger's still evil. And Mm. he still just wants to take over uh, Wakanda. And you got to watch T'Challa die again, which fucking sucked. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So yeah, I just... uh, yeah, nothing about this episode was interesting. It was 
a continuation of a thing that we liked about Killmonger, which is like his sinisterness and how well thought out and executed Killmonger's plans are. Like even in the even in the movie, like Killmonger diplomatically understands what's going on and like capturing an invader to offer them as a sacrifice to make yourself look good and like being a triple agent playing every side just oh, to watch it all fall. His strategic mind is incredible. So I think it was very impressive writing and a strong understanding of Killmonger, if not a new, but it wasn't, you're right, it wasn't a new exploration as much as it was just a like, let's do a, a slight detour. And, it, and it's fine. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. But what's interesting about Killmonger to me is like, he's a strategic mind, but he's also, you know, morally gray. You're like, in a different setting, he's absolutely a hero mm -hmm. in like just a slight POV change. So, but like that's not explored in any way. They're just like, he's a straight up villain. Yeah. So that was, it was a real missed opportunity, I think. And I think Michael B. Jordan deserved a chance to like be a hero Killmonger. Yeah, because this, this is another one of those scenarios, I think because, because the writing wasn't there, it didn't allow Michael B. Jordan to show range. Mm -hmm. And Michael B. Jordan was great and did a, a very good job of like re being right back in char character. It feels, like a, it feels like missing scenes from Black Panther. Like it feels like not a second was missed. Michael B. Jordan is Killmonger again, but doesn't get to explain explore, go to a different direction with his performance of that character. Yeah. I did like the joke about liking anime. That was a nice was deep funny. cut about how Michael B. Jordan is super into anime. <laughs> so I like that he has a sense of humor about himself, like the Space Jam joke as well. Like, Michael B. Jordan, you're fun and I like you and I wish you all the best. Yeah. A lot of love for Michael B. Jordan. So yeah, this episode was kind of nothing to me. Yeah, I'm with you there. And then uh, that brings us to the most recent one that we watched, episode seven, which is what if uh, Thor were an only child? Loved this episode. This episode was fantastic. It had a few little flaws, but for them, like, so fun. I, so fun. So I have a question. I don't fully understand. Was the planet going to party to death? Was I, he lying to Jane? Because at one point he was like, we partied real hard, and then an asteroid hit or whatever. I didn't have anything to do with that. I This was actually literally what I meant when I said it has some flaws, because I don't know, and that's made super unclear. Like, when Captain Marvel, like, I thought there was, like, a virus that was making them party? Well, and it was going to be, like, a Loki trick that he was playing? Because at one point they even say, like, like uh, a Thor or whatever is in Vegas. And they're like, the party is spreading. Parties are just breaking out across the globe. But, like, why, why would they? That's not how parties work. Like, I guess, like, some parties would. Some people would, like, see it on the news and be like, aliens are here and they're chill. Let's have parties. But just as many people would be like, arm the nuclear warheads. Let's prepare for the end of the world. I don't know why there was a party virus. I don't know. And there wasn't, though. There was no virus. It really was just people came to party with Thor, and they chose different continents, I guess, and they would arrive. And, and like, they destroyed some stuff, but not to the point where I thought Captain Marvel should throw punches. Mm. Like, they weren't causing that much damage. Although, you know, aliens show up, and you can't control them. You do have to do some... You yeah. got to you got to get them off the planet. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was really unclear what evil was happening. Yeah. And I've, at the end when Thor was just like, "No, this was just a party and there was no nothing sinister happening at all." Because when he asks for help to clean up, everyone's leaving, and then he does like just say like, "Don't though." And then they don't as if there's like a mind control spell that he's doing or has access to that just isn't brought up. Yeah, and there's like and it feels like at one point maybe the script was that it was a Loki virus because he does things like dropping Thor's phone and breaking it and he's leaving and he's like Thor's mad at him. And I'm like, was there a version of this script where this was a Loki mischief virus? Ah, I see what you're and saying. And you guys changed it for some reason mm. and didn't really get all the elements out? Oh, maybe, maybe. Because I agree this was also, this did damper my enjoyment because I was like, I'm not sure what's happening, but I, I'm having a lot of fun. Ha I had so much fun on the ride, but I did have questions about the ride. What but, ride am I on? But I agree with you. <laughs> what ride is it this? Was, uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was a bananas episode. Everything is going on. Fucking everyone came to Earth for this party. I adored so many quick jokes in this. Like, I, I have so many questions about giant blue Loki. I'm like, could you be big at any point? 
I assume he could. Like, Thanos is trying to snap your neck, and you're not just like, boom, I'm 10 feet tall. Like, <laughs> why mm. can't you just do that? Why right. are you so small? I, I... I have theories about that. I actually think that like him attempting to look human and it absorbing and working so much uh, or as guardian and absorbing and working so much as guardian magic did change him. Did change his actual biological composition. That makes a lot of sense. I think if you shape shift long enough, you probably get stuck in the form yeah. you've taken. But yeah. like. I've never seen the big Loki before, and it was wild. Yeah. I loved big Loki. Big Loki was so much. And Hiddleston was having a great time playing it. Hiddleston and Hemsworth were both having a blast. Hemsworth crushed this. Hemsworth is wildly talented at comedy. Oh, my wildly, God. Wildly, wildly talented. I think this is the only, like, really great comedic performance in all of What If. Like, mm. there's been episodes that are fun. And, like, Haley Atwell also did, like, a good, joyous performance. Right. But this is comedic. Yes. And he's crushing it. Yeah, like, it is It is him and Paul Rudd in a jar. <laughs> yeah, Paul Rudd in a jar. Paul Rudd in a jar. You got me on Paul Rudd in a jar. Rudd in it. But Paul Rudd is someone, like, you think Paul Rudd, you think comedy. I think Chris Hemsworth is a wildly talented and underused as a comedic actor. He gets he gets comedy, he's unpretentious and is very fun playing it and absolutely nails it in this episode. Yeah, he really will let himself be the butt of the joke and like which doesn't happen much because he's a huge jacked handsome man, but Yeah, it's like, like him and Channing Tatum are the two willing oh, to be the butt of the joke. Oh my god, those two together would be so powerful. They would be way be too over powerful. 9,000. Yeah. It would be uh, But like the Ghostbusters reboot was where Hemsworth was like the nerd made fun of and like he does comedy really well in that. Really dumb. Like yeah. his character's just an idiot and I feel like because Ghostbusters like didn't make any money, no one really acknowledged that he was incredible. In in that yeah and also like well we all know thor ragnarok's really funny yeah. but like i don't think a lot of us are like it's because chris hensworth we're like it's because of taika yeah but chris was already good at comedy yeah like, absolutely. taika brought it out of him taika gave him the script and the direction to allow him to do that mm -hmm. yeah but yeah this was this performance was was so stellar and yeah. everyone else did great too i really liked that this was an episode which is like it's a party episode we're having fun but also for no reason in particular like it's all women solving the problems. It's Jane. It's uh, uh, Colby Darcy, Smulders. Or, uh, oh, uh, Maria Hill. Maria Hill, uh, Darcy, Captain Marvel, yeah. the mom, Frigga. Yeah. Like, the, the women have to come and clean up the party, which is like, God, that is, actually, maybe that's, that's true. We all have to do that. Yeah. We have to clean up after you boys to take all care the of the time. dumb boys. Yeah. Fix the planet and make yeah. sure you stay in line. Uh, but yeah, I like that there was like strong, powerful women throughout this. But they also still partied. Like Darcy and Jane had a great time. So mm -hmm. they, they did get to go party. And like, yeah, the cameos were so fun. When he fixed the Leaning Tower of Pisa, I lost my mind. That is such a good joke. <laughs> It's such a good but obvious joke that a, that a god shows up and would think that he did that after a bender <laughs> is such a good, simple, like that is clean A to B comedy writing and it's so fucking funny. There's so many good jokes like that. Captain Marvel not knowing what Stonehenge is. You uh. live in space. You live with aliens in space, and you're like, I, I actually don't know what this is. We don't know. Nobody knows <laughs> nobody what this does. Knows what it and is. I really thought Thor was going to tell them what it does. He don't know. No, he don't know. <laughs> this was I. This was like one of the only ones. This one in Captain Carter. I'm like, I want to watch these again. Mm -hmm. There was no other episodes I really wanted to pop on again, but these two were so good. And I think that that is such a fun understanding of Thor's character as well. Like for this episode to kind of start with like. Loki is the one who teaches him lessons mm -hmm. and what happens if you don't have someone around teaching him lessons. And I think that that is a hundred percent true. And you know, in Norse mythology or any, any mythological tale, the whole point is to teach lessons. And if you remove the lesson teacher character who puts you in a precarious situation, you don't learn anything, but not everyone is inherently evil. And I kind of liked that as a lesson of the thing too, to be like, what if he didn't learn responsibility? He'd be a bit of a party boy. And there's something kind of anybody. soft and harmless about that, that I, assuming that he's not doing some weird mind control spell, the plot is kind of unclear. But like, there's something so soft about that to be like, we changed a thing from his backstory and he's not as heroic. He's kind of just a neutral chaos. He likes to party. Pretty fun, huh? Like, it's still pretty chill. It's pretty chill. And in some ways he's actually 
nicer without Loki because in Thor the movie, his dick move was that he invaded Jotunheim and wanted mm-hmm. to kill the Frost mm-hmm. Giants. Without Loki, he just wants to have a party. Yeah, he's friends with Frost Giant. Diplomatic relations at Asgard are doing better. Giving Loki back to his dad, Odin, you crushed yeah. it. Frig- this Frigga's episode. alive. Uh, well, Frigga diplomat- doesn't die till two movies later. I guess you're right. Okay, but, yeah. But she's going to be alive. Yeah. I feel. I feel mm-hmm. it in my heart. She's going to live. This oh, yeah. Like, so, yeah, yeah, not having Loki there... Is like, yeah, I like this. Like, he's inherently good, but he's also he's not inherently great. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he, he's, he's inherently not, okay. I'm an inherently bro. I, I think he is inherently like his father, which is a like kind of petulant, uh, kind of adolescent ruler who takes thousands of years to get to a place, mm. whereas Loki helps him get there in hundreds of years. So I, I think that there is that, like, where it's just like, yeah, no, he's still the the son prince of a god who, like, Odin's still going to teach this fucking dude some lessons. Yeah, he's going to go j- jerk off when his dad's asleep. Like, <laughs> Jesus, why did, we do, why did you do that? Jesus. I, I didn't mean to say that, but I did. <laughs> when his dad's asleep, he's going to go jerk off. I meant sneak off, and I said jerk off. <laughs> your dad's asleep. You're gonna go sneak off. You know what teens are like. You wait till your dad's asleep. I mean, I'm not wrong. Off. They do. You jerk off anytime. You don't need to wait. You don't wait until your dad's asleep. I mean, like you're. It's easier when he's asleep. It you're makes like, it all weird. It's though. more comfortable. You you're like, no one's all. gonna open the door. Mm. <laughs> Oh, boy, you've made it all weird. <laughs> I made it all weird. I have one argument with the title. Uh, I, I'm going to be a real pedantic nerd. Uh, if this is the episode about what if Thor was an only child, we didn't even talk about Hela, who is his sister. Yeah, that's true. Is she not around? And his older sister, because she was around earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that would greatly affect uh, Odin's parenting if Hela didn't exist. Ooh, that's true, because he got some of the bad stuff out with her. Yeah, he was a much better dad because of her. Yeah, he was a shitty dad. He was a better dad. Thor because... Yes, because because he got all of his shittiness out of her, but also he had her at a warlike time in his life as Mm -hmm, well, mm -hmm. so... So I just think that wasn't touched upon, and I think Mm -hmm. they forgot that Mm -hmm. she existed, and I'm like, uh, respect Hela's name and Kate Blanchett within. Mm. So, that's that's my... my Respect you Kate gotta Blanchett respect Kate you've, Blanchett as Hella. You've gotta respect it. But yeah, fun episode. I really like that one. Super fun. I like the fun ones way more. And oddly enough, like all of the murder ones are just are much higher rated uh, episodes in terms of like fan reaction and like IMDb and Metacritic rating. Are we not the ideal audience of the MCU? I want goofy, silly shit. I want silly, fun shit. I mean, the Ant Man movies are my favorite MCU movies, probably. Mm, they're, they're up there. They're pretty good. They're delightful. I do like a Spider Man too. You do like, although I will say the Zombies episode is very good. Mm, yeah, yeah. You're allowed to kill off the Avengers in a zombie. In a episode. zombie, you can do whatever. In you a want. zombie, you can do what you want. All right, I think uh, I'm feeling good on What If. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good on What If. I'm excited to see what's going on with these last two and if they're going to explain where uh, Infinity Stone Ultron came from. Uh, if that's gonna Vision, connect. Ultron, Infinity Stones. Yeah, if that it, seemed like it didn't make any sense. It caught even the Watcher off guard, and he's the one telling the story, so that's kind of strange. That is that is making me think the last two are actually going to tell a story, question mark? I've been waiting for that, especially considering that, uh, so uh, the voice of the Watcher is Jeffrey Wright. Yes. Uh, who's a, a phenomenal actor. You might, uh, you know, listeners, you might know him from Westworld, or uh, he played uh, Felix, the CIA agent, in the recent James Bond movies. Uh, Phenomenal actor. He's terrific, but he's really just doing that opening VO and a touch here and there, but to get him, and he's like top build as well, I think that they're going to do something a bit more with The Watcher, and I'm kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop. And maybe maybe that was it, him at the end of episode seven being surprised, which he shouldn't be because he's omniscient. Uh, he's the watcher. He sees all, knows all. He's omniscient, omnipresent, uh, omnipotent. He's all it's those ev- things. He's all of the omnis. He's omni, omnis. omni. He's all uh, of those things. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I feel I, I have been waiting for the other shoe to drop. Maybe that was it. I think that they're going to give the watcher a character and a choice by the end of this I think they. Show. I think they have to. They've been kind of hinting at it since Strange talked to him. Mm-hmm. I think that was the point where you're like, oh, okay, there is going to be yeah. something happening here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what it will be, 
but I don't know if it'll like, because I don't know when these were all supposed to come out because the schedules are all weird. Because I'm like, in a world where the schedules aren't messed up, I say last episode ties in with the Loki multiverse things. Right. But in a world where I'm like, they kept making the animated ones, but Loki came out later than it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just don't know. Yeah, stuff. 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 All right, well, let's go in for the close. Let's ask the final question of what would you change or what if... You could change, change something. something. What would you change? That's kind of what we do. That's kind of what we've always done. What if the, there was a change? What if there was a change? Uh, so we're going to do they that. They stole our thing. They stole our thing, really. Uh, <laughs> we do that. We, we did that. They definitely haven't been doing what if since the 70s. No, no one look up the comics. So uh, we're going to go in for the close. But before we do ask the final question of what would you change, uh, we're going to remind you, as we do every week, if you haven't already, please uh, follow, subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. If it's Spotify, Podcast Addict on Android, there's lots of other podcatchers out there that you can uh, that you can use. Whatever you're using to listen to this right now, hit the subscribe or follow button and leave a rating and review. Uh, I know every podcast tells you to do it. It's important for a reason. It's because it's how we find new listeners, how we get recommended to new people. The It, it pleases the the algorithms, that which are the, the gods that we bow to in the digital age. Oh, please, algorithm. Dear algorithm, please let people see our podcast. So do that for us, please. Do that for us, please. And a quick, a quick, please, please, please. We see the numbers. We know a bunch of you are listening on Facebook. Thank you for listening. Oh, yeah. Thank you for listening on Facebook. Thank you for listening on Facebook. Please get a real podcast app. Yeah. Don't trust Facebook to show us that you're to show us to you. No, they won't. They're they, gonna stop. At some point, they're gonna hold you hostage. So, as mm-hmm. as a quick side tangent, all right. For those of you who aren't hitting fast forward, here's here's a little fun side tangent that we're gonna go on. A little peek behind the curtain and some information about Facebook. Facebook recently added the option for Facebook podcasts, so you can get your podcasts through Facebook and through the Facebook page. And we submitted to it because anything that allows us to access our fans and our listeners easier is great at some point facebook's is gonna is gonna fuck us they're gonna fuck us they they've it, always fucked us they give you they give you a new thing yeah and they show it to all your fans yeah and then they stop showing it to your and fans they, like give us some money and, and we'll then show they it to hold your it fans. hostage yeah so like the way it used to work for example when we first started our facebook page with our web comic it used to be one-to-one if you hit follow or like or whatever term they used at the time uh, on our Facebook page, if we had a thousand people who liked us and we made a post, a thousand people saw it. And if a thousand people logged in that day, whoever exa- logged in that day they saw s- that post. They saw it. And Facebook at the time was like, if you pay us money for advertising, we'll show it to new people. Then at some point, Facebook did the rug pull and they turned all Facebook pages into a hostage situation, which is, you know, these numbers aren't exactly right, but if you have a 1,000 fans, Facebook is like, we showed it to 10 people who like your page, and if you pay us money, we will let the other people who like your page see it. So now they're not even charging to show it to new people. They're charging to gatekeep your own fans from you and that's their business model and why they make so much or one of the many reasons why they make so much money and now with the podcast stuff they're like it's one to one we're gonna show it to everyone don't worry about it I'm like very much you are going to fuck us so if you're listening on Facebook thank you love that you're listening welcome Facebook will fuck us, which also will fuck you, because at some point you'll be like, wow, have, how come they haven't uploaded a new episode in a year? Or and it's because we haven't been spent giving money to Facebook for them to show it to you. Or you'll forget we exist because Facebook hasn't been showing us to you, or you'll think we're not podcasting at all because yeah. Facebook is not showing it to you. So thank you for listening. We so, so appreciate it. But yes, it is. it will be so much better for us and you if you listen on a podcast app. Please. And we will. We show up every week there. Every Every single week. Consistently for years, we've been showing up on iTunes and on Podcast Attic and on Spotify and Stitcher. Because we mentioned the mysterious algorithm. There's good algorithms and bad algorithms. Facebook's a bad one. Facebook's a bad one. You know, your your Apple Podcasts, your Spotify, you press the button, we're there every week. They're not hiding anything. The algorithm gets us to new people. Facebook bad, other ones good. So hit like, hit subscribe, follow, leave a rating and review on a, a podcatcher. And thank you for listening to this wonderful Andrew rant. Yes. That was great. That was a little side note. A little side note. Wanted to let everybody, a little yeah, a little, sometimes we like to hide a little nugget in I these little people, sections, I you know? I think people don't know 
this about social media. Yeah. Some people do. Some, some, people, some of you Some people there, very much you do. You absolutely do. Y'all but gotta, in case you don't know. Anything you like, you've got to start liking it off of Facebook. For the, It is literally the only way anything's going to survive. Here's a fun challenge. Go into your liked pages on Facebook and try to figure out how many of them you've seen a post from in the past couple of years. Yeah. It's probably a lot you haven't. Yeah, and they're regularly <laughs> posting. They're just not giving Facebook money. Uh, and then the other th- option as well, if you want uh, cool bonus episodes of this podcast, you could check us out uh, over on Patreon at patreon.com slash from superheroes. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash from superheroes. This month we did more James Bond over there. So our Patreon it gets an exclusive episode of the podcast every single month just for our patrons. And we did a Quantum of Solace over on the Patreon exclusive episode of the podcast this month. Real fun episode. Real fun episode. Good time. I had a great time. So if you want all of the storyline of the Daniel Craig Bonds, you can we Quantum Cell is only available on the Patreon. And you get access to all the old episodes when you sign up at the $10 level. There's so much more of us out there. There's so much going on. And at Patreon, you can you can do a, a buck a month, three, five, ten, however much you can afford. You can change at any time, cancel at any time. There's no obligations. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, so if literally, if you've got 10 bucks to kick in this month, head over to Patreon, kick in 10 bucks, listen to as many bonus episodes as you want slash can. If you don't have that in the budget next month, cancel it. Drop it down to a dollar. Do whatever you got to do. Take care of yourself first. But if you have something for us, we will very much appreciate you, and we will give you a little bit of extra content for it. And we love you so much, all of our patrons and everyone who listens to everything. Yeah, absolutely. You're all great. Patreon.com slash from superheroes. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash from superheroes. And now let's go in for the close. Let's ask the final question of what would you change? What if? Diana, what if? This is weird because every episode is singular, so it's hard to have a big change. And I like that every episode is singular. So I will just choose an episode is what I've decided to do. Um, I'm going to choose the Killmonger episode. Very disappointed in this one, but it had the most potential to me. So my, my change is what if Killmonger became a hero by working with Tony Stark? I think this... I think this just makes sense. Like, I think he can become a full Avenger. Like, I think I think it makes sense that he would become kind of like, maybe not so much Rhodey because he is more of like a hand-to-hand fighter. But like, I think if he had, like, if Tony trusted him fully because he saved his life and gave him all these resources. I do think he would just be more kind of philanthropic. Like, he wouldn't want to take over Wakanda. He would be like, oh, I can help the people who are oppressed who I want to help. Like, I've got millions of dollars at my disposal. Like, I don't I don't think he is this inherently evil as the show wants us to believe. And I think it was actually kind of a disservice to the character. So my big change is uh, he is... He works with Tony to become a hero. And maybe Tony doesn't become a hero because he pushes Killmonger into being a hero. And Killmonger can be the start of the MCU. Mm. And I think that's like... Because Tony and him are very much similar in that, like, they are... Tony before the cave is a bad guy for the most part. Um, so I think there's there's very similar veins that they can go to. It, it would be more similar to me of Peggy becomes Cap or T'Challa becomes Star-Lord. What if Killmonger became Iron Man? Like, what if he started the MCU? I think it's such a in- more interesting story that I want to see, and I just... I didn't want to see most of the Avengers die again. Uh, so definitely get rid of that. And yeah, uh, so yeah, my big change is that episode is completely rehauled to what if Killmonger became a hero with Tony Stark. Hmm. What about you, Andrew? Uh, I love that change. Uh, I fully agree with you. I think that that is a better version of that episode. Uh, I think my change would be more of an overarching thing for all of them. Uh, I agree with you that like there are little things here and there that the episodes could have done a better job on. My my episode specific one would be Doctor Strange. Mm. Uh, that I I think the biggest thing about Doctor Strange is not like that her death is a fixed point in time, but it should be a time paradox where if he, if he breaks his hands instead of her dying, he never learns to time travel, which means he doesn't come back to save her. So he can't save her because it creates a time paradox, mm. uh, which would have been a way better internal, uh, a thing for uh, the ancient one to do. But my, my overarching thing is that these episodes, they're changing in tone. Some of them more playful, some of them hyper violent, uh, but I want to see them change in genre. Kind of similar to what WandaVision did to a certain degree, where, like, WandaVision, you know, granted they're doing it through this uh, lens of different eras of television uh, and different versions of the sitcom is Mm -hmm. how WandaVision did it. 
But I don't understand why they're not doing genre shifts because clearly they're, it's kind of no holds barred. They're going hyper violent. Uh, I don't know what they're rating this, but it actually seems like it's pushing, uh, you know, and I'm going to use that term softly, but pushing boundaries for what they're doing with the MCU and with Disney and on mainline Disney+. Plus. But the zombie one, granted zombies are kind of like silly and fun in this scenario, but it's like why can't we have that as a horror one. Like, why can't we have a full on comedy? Because the zombie one was like a little intimidating, but it wasn't presented as a horror. I want to see a different oh, genre. I, I felt that I was actually just about to say the, the the zombie one is horror. Why didn't they do that with with other ones? Oh, okay. I thought okay. it was. I thought it was horror. Like they did like shadowy reveals of zombies, and like it was gooey, and they were gross, and they did the tropes like don't separate, you're gonna die. Right, right. So I think that was pretty horror. But I, I okay. agree with you. That's the only one that was right. a genre. Like right. they didn't do I don't know a western episode or that's and that and that absolutely could have easily be done like you know what if cap gets sent back in time and like the tesseract somehow or whatever fucking sends him back and it's captain america in like a western and he's like the guy wandering from town to town saving the day like cap in a western makes so much sense yeah yeah, i love that there's 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 tonal shifts here, but there's no genre shifts. Mm. There's no shift in like how things are portrayed and how things are done. Even just like the the Thor party episode is fun and Howard the Duck, they kind of do some straight comedy with. But I'm like, I would like to see just a like, just give me a straight slapstick comedy Howard the Duck episode where it is just a like a comedy cartoon. I want to see that. And I also think that since we're exploring the multiverse, this would be a fun place for Disney to play around with some of the shit that they own. You know, like, why not have fun? Why not, like, bring it... Like, they've they've already admitted that they're keeping Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. Like, that's something that, like, Disney has talked about for a while. They have the contract for it. He's going to be the holdover from Fox. Have fucking Ryan Reynolds show up as Deadpool. Like, I get you don't want to, you know, blow the big reveal of, like, you're holding out for X-Men or Fantastic Four on the big screen. But we know Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. Go bananas. Do some shit that you're not going to do. Like, have a what if the... What if the Netflix series connected to the movies and you bring <laughs> the Netflix idea, actors back? Like, what if, what, what if, like, do your own multiverse with, like, the old Fantastic Four and Iron Man Marvel Power Hour cartoons? Yeah, like, they're not really taking in the fact that, like, it's animated and you can do anything. They abs- really are acting like they have to get these actors. Yeah. Like, yeah. you can do anything. They have said that this is MCU canon, every single one of them. Right, like it is a numbered multiverse within the MCU. so like, maybe you didn't have to do that. Maybe it could have just been a fun animated show, so you could do, yeah, like, you know, maybe you make, maybe you have Chris Evans play Captain America and the Human Torch, like, right, or not Chris Evans, because he didn't come back, but like, you know, sure, do something fun with that. Michael B. Jordan is also the Human Torch. So many Human Torches. Have a double Human (laughs) Torches, like, yeah, like, what if there were too many Human Torches? Yeah, so I think that, like, opening it up a little bit, going a, going a bit wilder, doing crazy stuff with what you own, and playing with genre. Give me a Western, give me a give samurai. Me a noir give, or... Yes, give me a black and white. Give me like how was the Black Widow solving the murders? Not like a, a noir mystery. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, I think uh, it could stand to play with genre a bit. Is my main thing. I think that's fun. And I agree with I you on uh, on Killmonger. I would love to see a different exploration mm-hmm. of his character as opposed to a continuation. I think your idea is fun. I think your idea is fun. Well, aren't we fun together? Uh, apparently, we are. Excellent. That's what I'm. That's what I'm told. Five stars. Question. Oh, five stars. I'm gonna give us five stars. I like to hear it. Uh, all right. Well, that is gonna be it for this week for our episode on what if. Uh, we are gonna be back next week talking about, and it's this. This is correct, right? This hasn't moved. This is correct. Talking about Venom two. Venom. Venom. Hit him, and then a Venom. Venom. Two. Finally happening, and they haven't moved James Bond either. I all right, here we go, y'all. <laughs> I can't. Andrew does. What if movies actually came out? I feel like there's been like one trailer for Venom Two. I will absolutely agree. There's been no press for this movie. There was also an article like a week ago where it was like they're not done the CGI on Venom Two. It's been two years. I I don't know what we're gonna. 
Guys, we'll report back. We're going to see Venom 2 next week. We're going to see it. We'll tell you how it is. We'll tell you how it is. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to reach us, you can get a hold of me on Twitter at Ivamy, I-V-I-M-E-Y. You can reach me at Words of Diane. I've actually got a great pinned tweet about Venom. To, oh, that is a Venom-related <laughs> pinned tweet. Check out her pinned tweet. You guys, tweet. if you've never checked out my pinned tweet. You've got to now check out her pinned gotta tweet. check it out now. Uh, and uh, if you want to reach both of us, you can reach us at From Superheroes. And we'll see you all next week. Bye. Venom.